Oh, come on. You're back again? Welcome back to another video, I guess, because today it's time for more 40k content. Welcome back, everybody, to the channel. Now, as you know, I'm very new to the Warhammer 40k universe, and I've been enjoying every single piece of media that I've been consuming. If you guys have checked out the channel, then you've noticed that I live reacted to Bricky's video explaining every faction in Warhammer 40k. Part 1. So naturally we have to check out part two and that's what we're going to be doing in today's video so i hope that gets you all excited because i'm ready i've got my cup of coffee here and i just kind of want a cozy good time reacting to some incredible warhammer 40k lore and thank you all so much for supporting the videos if you're new to this channel and you want to see more 40k content a lot of it is on the way on this channel like i said i'm going to be using my youtube channel to binge as much warhammer 40k stuff as I can. All that being said, let's check out every Warhammer 40k faction, part two. Hey all, this is part two in a two-part series on the Warhammer races. Hell if you yeah. haven't seen part one yet, we do the Imperium of Man. You can check that out in the description, and I highly recommend you watch that to get context for this episode. If you already have, go ahead and keep on watching. So after an entire I episode on of it. nothing but humans, we can now talk about chaos which involves humans <gasps> again, but a little bit less. Okay, so I was I was curious to know what part two is going to be all about. This is the first time I'm going to be delving deep into the warp and learning about chaos and the chaos gods and Horus. I'm assuming that's who that is, right? He's the one that defied the emperor and turned the uh, Primarchs against him. This is going to be good. Yes, we also got demons and shit. I just yes. felt someone grab my ass. <laughs> what? Like hard, Nick. The warp, the immaterium, the yes. hellish landscape, the purgatory dimension realm. I'm so curious the about this dude. Realm of our existence. Now, so in the curious. Warp, it's terrifying, horrible. There are demons everywhere. Things are crazy. All your minds and thoughts and emotions get projected there. It is both formless and empty. It is vast and tiny. It uh, obeys. Oh, the that laws Metroid of time music. Physics, you hear that? While simultaneously does absolutely nothing of the sort. It is a hodgepodge and a culmination of just unknowable eldritch horrifying shit and there are four gods that yep. permeate in chaos and the warp these are the four major chaos gods and if we wish to learn about chaos we need to learn about each and every single one of these chaos gods first up we have corn and he is the easiest corn is your classic satan he is all about anger, murder, fighting, blood, guts, death. You ever heard the term blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne? That's Korg. The whole idea is that he is all about the no, fury I don't and think I've ever heard of that. Of battle. He doesn't care where blood comes from so long as blood is flowing. He wants to fight and murder and carnage and slaughter and death, 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 death. That is Korn. Very simple to understand. Next up, you have Zeech, and Zeech is the god of change. However, the god of change, it permeates in so many different other ways. He's the uh, most like how is, Eldric of How do you pronounce that gods. like that? He has this weird way to always be plucking at the strings of the universe. He's always conniving and scared scheming and doing his best bit of a mr burns is he? As he can zeech is, is unknowable everything that makes sense he will and won't do every future and setting and every type of of destiny or fate is all foretold and also changeable it is set in stone while also completely random he knows so before he he continues um zeech is obviously a very interesting god the visuals that he's using here, I'm assuming they're from books and stuff. Like, this is not like AI generated images or anything like that. I'm sure it's not, but is this like this image here? This is actually Zeech. Like, what we're looking at here, this weird creature with teeth and a mouth down there, that this is Zeech. The, the imagery, the imagination is, is incredible. Whoever created Warhammer 40k must have watched a lot of Barney the Dinosaur when they were growing up because. In hell, they know how to use their imagination. Knows what everything is going to happen, and also that none of it's going to happen. You would ask Zeech a question, and that question leads to three more questions, and those questions lead to the heat death of the universe, which asks four answers to those questions. And then he thinks to himself, "What are questions even really? And are you even asking the questions, or are you simply giving paths to answers and and other horseshit?" 
Zeech is just, <laughs> I'm going to fuck with stuff. He is yes and he is no. He is the understanding and he is complexity. He is unknowable. And that's what the God of Change is about. Very bizarre. And he likes birds a lot. I don't, I don't know why. Next up, we got Papa Nurgle. Papa Nurgle, Nurgle, he loves you for who you are. Probably not. He will murder you just the same. But Papa Nurgle is about rot, pestilence, death, and decay. He is the end of everything. Him and Zeech do not like each other very much because where Zeech represents change and adjustment, Nurgle represents stagnation and death. He, he looks like a... I was, okay, I'll take it back. I was about to say he looks like a pretty happy dude in that image. This one says otherwise. Well, I mean, you can kind of make a smile out of that. Is all about miasma and pestilence and large bloat and pus and, and organs and people just being sedentary, sloth. He is the idea that everything will rot and decay and die. Nothing is certain besides decay and death. All of us will end up the same way and broken down through just sheer never-ending Jesus Christ, this so imagery. the joke that Nurgle always loves you is generally because of that. Because we all end up the same. We all rot. And we all die and wither. That's Nurgle. And he's got a general theme of, of course, pestilence and, and different kinds of diseases and sickness and things of that nature. That's generally Nurgle. He's pretty easy to understand as well. And he's he, he chunk! Finally, we have the youngest of the Chaos Gods, and that is Slanesh, also known as the Prince of Pleasure, or the God of Unspeakable Excess. So oh, that's because of the Eldar, right? And their weird, sexual, murderous, psychotic fetishes that they were doing out of boredom manifested this god, right? Isn't that, isn't that what happened? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that why she was spawned in the realm of chaos? Because of all of that negative, evil, lustful energy? Again, correct me if I'm wrong. Slanesh is generally referred to with sex, but it's not only sex, it's just that's a good avenue if you want to make stuff. Slanesh is just the idea of the senses of the body being cranked to not just 11, but more like 17. See, we'll discuss Slanesh a little bit more when we talk about the Eldar, because they done fucked up, but she... The Eldar, yeah. He... It or whatever is mainly about just the excess of emotions and therefore sex is generally a large part of it however it's mostly pain and torture lots of pain torture but sometimes sexually related or drug related lots of drugs lots of drugs Slanesh gets off on everything extremes in happiness extremes in sadness extremes in pain and sadism and masochism and of course that goes along with the sex part of it as well it's generally referred to with sex because of the color scheme very purple lots of exposed genitalia a lot of their models have like exposed nipples and stuff and that is generally the theme you go for from a physical side but it really embodies everything mainly pain and also the, the excessive amounts of emotion. So when it comes down to it, you'll find a lot of right. them have things like spikes or whips or any kind of BDSM style gear because it is unspeakable excess. The prince of pleasure. Everything in excess to the point where it is just sheer frightening. That is Slanesh in a nutshell. A little bit bizarre and a little hard to describe sometimes. But as we talk more about the Dark Eldar layer in this video, you'll understand it far, far better and far more than you'd want to. They might be thinking, why oh, would okay. anyone ever want to join chaos? They all look horrifying, screwed up, and just frightening things. I like, I like this image here. I think this is very cool. Although... It's a very different depiction of the other images that we've seen because they all look like they're in cool armor. I'm assuming this is meant to be Slanesh, but that looks like something else entirely. I, I don't know, but this this is cool image. I know it's just to kind of give a visual representation of what Bricky's talking about, but I, I'd like to know, like, can a, can a, can a, can a, canonically, can, in the canon, of Warhammer 40k, I can't say that word, how they actually look or how they're supposed to look. Maybe there's different reiterations of the characters that he's talking about and they all have different ways of looking and different themes and stuff, but I would like to know how, how they actually look. 
darkness, right? Well, the thing is, is that, of course, one, your mind is put into the warp and the materium, so you can be easily swayed by chaos demons when they get into your head, especially if you're a psyker. Sometimes regiments of the less mentally strong people, whether they be civilians or, say, low-level guardsmen or conscripts, can be easily swayed by this and become chaos cultists and stuff, and they serve their dark gods and whatever god they personally refer. However, and this might seem strange, chaos in their own right isn't necessarily evil. See, the warp is every manifestation of emotion and being, every soul, every thing of existence. This includes all the good things. All the different chaos gods have another side to their coin. Korn might be death, murder, slaughter, slaughter, but he's also got this weird sense of survival of the fittest, trial by combat, and honor. Korn will never lie to you. Corn will never stab you in the back. Corn isn't about conniving and scheming. Corn is about straight up mono e mono, you versus me, get in the ring. We're going to murder each other hard right now. It may Fairness. not be a good thing at the end of the day, okay. but it is that other side of the coin. Him and Zeech generally don't get along because Zeech is that conniving schemer, but he's also about the idea of hope. Where there is change, there is change for your predicament. There is change for your problem. The hope of the galaxy, the ability to bend the world to your will, the idea that your fate is not set in stone, but in reality that you control your own destiny and can control it whenever you want. The changer of ways, that is Zeech. And of course, Zeech and Nurgle hate each other because while Nurgle does represent stagnation, death, and decay, he also represents finality an ending, the fact that you can be mentally at peace knowing that you will end and how you will end. Fear of the unknown, fear of change is not present with Nurgle. With Nurgle, everything will rot and die, and that provides that finality, that ability that this is over. We are all the same, and we will all end the same. We know the meaning of life. The meaning of life is to live and die and rot. And with that, it brings peace of mind. Slanesh is a lot more simple. While they I really are like the this. excess of emotion, they are also the representation of emotion. Slanesh embodies happiness. Slanesh embodies excitement and joy and pleasure. Not only in the sense of the physical, you know, bam. <laughs> and sunlight, the feeling, emotion and feeling, all of that is also represented with Slanesh. So you have to ask why are they always represented as super evil skulls and spikes on everything and want to murder everybody? I don't really got an answer for you on that one. I think the answer is this just looks cooler and sounds cooler. Like what I've learned from Warhammer 40k, like, yeah, it, it's got this like rich story and everything has a, has a purpose and a reason, whether it's the wrong one or not doesn't make a difference but there is this like higher purpose in warhammer 40k and everybody has something that they're fighting for and it, it's always got this like deep meaning to like all of like the different factions and characters and lore but even all of that there the whole warhammer 40k theme is just pure heavy metal badassery that you can't help but admire and i think that's just why the chaos gods are represented in such a um a killer, demonic, death kind of way, because it's fucking heavy metal, it's cool as shit, and people are attracted to that, it's like the likes of you and me, the likes of me in particular now, because I've only really delved deep into it, this is the stuff that I just think is super hardcore and cool, you know, it's just cool as fuck, and having these themes just makes it interesting. You know, if it was any other way, I don't think Warhammer 40k would be as popular as it is. That's just my two cents. It's got to look cool. My assumption is that because mentally humans may think worse thoughts, even if we don't act on them and therefore they're projected in the warp more. That one's a little bit weird. I don't know. This is me spitballing right now, but I don't know. You need a, you need a super bad guy. You already got the Imperium of Man. You need somebody to be a little bit worse than them. So you got demons. Honestly, who cares? I just want to buy like a bird <laughs> magician. Look at him. So it's cool. cool. So combining all this together, that is cool. tabletop, chaos demons are generally very melee based. They run in, go really hard. You have lots of summoning and conjuring, tons of That's spells. That's so cool, Generally a little man. bit frail, but they have special saves to make them a little bit stronger. You've got giant demons and smaller demons. You got hordes of little boys and tons of big guys. Demons are as they seem. Demons. Nurgle is slow. Uh, Corn is super scary in melee. Oh, I love that. 
the colors are so nice are these all hand painted that's actually another thing that i want to ask because i know a lot of you do the little models like are all of them painted or can you buy them already painted and the ones that you buy buy already painted are they all hand painted by somebody else in a factory or something or again do you have to paint them yourself um i know i would be rubbish at painting these minifigures and stuff i just wouldn't be able to do it and i say that now but maybe with practice i could probably get good at it but I i'm just curious because i don't know anything about the tabletop but i know it's super popular and anytime i'm in a warhammer shop because i go in because i don't know why i've never been into warhammer or i had no reason to but i always see myself gravitating towards the stores that's probably because they they sell trading cards and stuff at the same time usually when when i get to these stores but i can't help but admire like the the tabletops and the setups that they have and these big battlefields that they have set up it's always so fucking cool to me i just never understood it but now here i am educating myself years and years later knowing about warhammer 40k for a long time and just never diving into it it's just so interesting how quickly this can get you in a couple of videos and you're like locked in for me it was space marine 2 to be honest with you but I'm, I'm just i'm just so curious about this you've got zeech who are far more into psychers and spell casting and then slanesh who is all melee really 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 fast but squishy but in lots of hordes of tons of melee and and pain damage of course so overall the demons are a huge part of 40k and a massive threat to almost every single faction with the, the exception of a couple however the big part about demons is also transferred into the other nine primarchs we didn't talk about, which are the Chaos Space Marines. <gasps> oh man, the Chaos Space Marines? Hang on a minute here. I didn't realize they were going to be like demonic looking. What? I thought they were just going to be Space Marines that serve the warp or the Chaos. Oh my god, dude, this is going to be good. Astaratis. I did see the comments in my reaction to the Astaratis animation. Um, seemingly, that's the name, the official, the official name for Space Marine. I, I apologize. I'm still learning. So horse and all of his boys. That's all horse. Of them the Primarchs. They have all also become chaos boys and they all have their own special chaos legions specializing in so many different things just like the adeptus astartes the angels of death the regular space marines chaos space marines aren't a whole lot different than the regular space marines they have the same armor you know the same training and toughness they just specialize in different kinds of things and also a lot of the primarchs have ascended into greater deep is it greater demons they're demon primarchs at this point. Gigantic, wow. horrifying man-demon hybrids that are pretty awesome, if I'm going to be honest. They look really, really cool. But them and their associated legions that they are a part of are all kind of going out there and causing a large ruckus for everyone else. Considering the raw strength and firepower of a legion of space marines, imagine that entire legion just converting to chaos and immediately fighting you. It's generally pretty horrifying. There's yeah, a lot I could of them, so i got to write them down. But you've got the Emperor's Children with Primarch Fulgrim, Lord Ugh. of the Slanesh. These people, they are some messed up people. They're just sensory overload. Tons of drugs, tons of torture. Oh my god, they don't even look like humans anymore, dude. They don't look like men. What the f*** is that? And I think Fulgrim is a demon Primarch right now. And oh god, I am terrified to see what that man looks like. At least on the tabletop, because the Emperor's children are not good people. You've got the Iron Warriors, which are kind of like opposite of the Imperial Fists, with Primarch Percherabo, I believe is his name. They're Chaos Undivided. They just kind of serve Chaos in a general aspect instead of choosing one of the four. But the Iron Warriors are big on the siege and fortification. Whoa, he looks like Darkseid from DC. That's insane. Wow, the imagery is so cool. And they're basically entirely against the Imperial Fist and a major rival. Percherabo, I believe, is also still alive, and I'm also very interested to see what he looks like. Cause... So he doesn't even know what they look like. Maybe now he does, because this video has been up a while, but that is so interesting dude i'm i'm invested in this heavily demon primarchs are badass you've got the night lords with primarch conrad kurz conrad kurz is dead which is good because he's a sick fuck but the night lords <laughs> are generally about terror, terrorizing people and terrorism they're generally about fear and probably so you've got the world eaters with primarch angron still alive also excited to see wow. angron 
if you think you've known an angry person, Angron is the angriest son of a bitch you will ever know. Angron removed parts of his brain that didn't make him angry so he could be angrier. Angron. Fucker's mad. You've got the Death Guard with Primarch <laughs> Mortarian. They actually have their own special codex and their own major army on the Ooh. tabletop. Mortarian himself is actually one of the models. And, and look at him. Look at him. It's so cool looking. Of course, Nurgle based. Jesus Christ. So this, this is what he actually looks like. Dude, what the fuck? That is, I love the colors. That is so badass. Oh my, look at the eyes on its wings. Crazy, it's got a mini me. Obviously, so very slow, but very tanky. You've got the word bearers with Primarch Lorgar. Lorgar is, I believe, still alive. I don't know what's up with him at the current moment, but the word bearers are generally the people who caused all the major problems in the beginning. At least I blame them for it. They're little assholes. You got the Black Legion with Primarch Horus. Get fucked, nerd. You've got the Alpha Legion with Primarch Alpharius Omegon. Chaos. Whoa. I think. And then finally, you've got the Thousand Sons with Primarch Magnus the Nerd. Uh, the Thousand Sons also have their own book. My. You say Magnus the Nerd? Is that actually his name? Just like the Death Guard, Magnus is also a tabletop model. He looks super cool. What the? Wait, so that's that's a, that's that's a Space Marine, as you can tell, and they're all super heavily Psyker and kind of Egyptian themed. They look pretty Whoa, neat. Whoa, that's cool! They're so cute, though. The little minifigures, aren't they? Little, little bits of grass. <laughs> But overall, with all of these Chaos Space Marine factions, you can play as a lot of a lot of different ones, but the main ones that you can really work at are standard Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, as well as the Death Guard and Thousand Suns, as they are the most fleshed out, especially on the tabletop, at least. See this right here? This is a really good way to describe the Chaos Space Marines. What the thick-headed fools with their broken corpse of an emperor fail to understand is that not only can they never defeat us, but they cannot hide or flee or shield themselves from the triumph of chaos. They are finite and we are unbound, undivided. They must not err or they shall fall to heresy. All who fall join our cause. Every imperial fool who dares to open his eyes is a willing recruit. They strive merely to hold back our fury and might, and it consumes them. Thus, you can see chaos is inevitable. We lurk not only beyond their grasp and at their gates, we lurk within the darkness of their souls, on the tip of their tongues, in their tortured dreams. We are them, but freed from the shackles of ignorance. We are them, grown strong, evolved. We are them, but so much more. As hardcore as that quote is, that the is saddest hardcore. part is they're mostly right. Chaos is basically unkillable. You could probably get really? rid of Space Marines a decent amount, the Chaos Space Marines, that is. But every soul that dies goes to the warp. Every Chaos soul will end up back in the warp. And depending on how hard you killed them, they will come back at some point. Every demon you banish will return at some point. Chaos is unstoppable. The warp is unending. And while maybe there is at some point some way to stop them somehow, the resources to do so, the requirements to do so, are so far beyond the reaches of man and the other races at the current moment that really it's just an unstoppable force that just keeps on coming and it's just barely being slowed. Okay. It's an unwinnable war then, no? Because, like, from what my understanding is, like, the, the whole idea b behind Warhammer 40k is the two sides fighting, right? You have the heretics versus the loyalists. The nine versus nine. You have the regular space marines, the loyalists, versus the chaos space marines, the heretics. But the, the heretics are on the side of chaos. And chaos, explained to me by Bricky, is, is unbeatable. So, it's a never-ending war. Doesn't this just automatically give chaos to your hand? Think about it. it sh shouldn't this really be a one-sided contest? If you're talking about the people that fight for the Emperor versus the chaos, and the chaos can't be beaten, they can't be killed, or just put back to where they were in the realm of the warp. And they'll come back eventually to fight against 
humanity again so like how, how the hell is there even mankind left i know a lot of you touched on the comment section that mankind in general in the 40k universe in 40k lore is like in the quantillions like it's it's astronomical how many there is and how many different planets and the population of man so it it's essentially like a never-ending war <laughs> because mankind won't stop reproducing and developing more and more like space marines and soldiers etc to fight against chaos which never ends this is fucking insane chaos is by far the biggest threat they are without number their legions are everywhere and yeah they're pretty scary so i promise we're done with humans now let's talk about some xenos the Eldar. Okay, here so we go. So let's talk about the Eldar, or also known as the Eldari, which are a super hyper-specialized and very technologically advanced race of, well, elf people. Created they were, by the Star well, Gods. Responsible for the creation of, of Slanesh, the newest demon god. How'd they do that? Oh, here we go. Debauchery on a world-ending scale. So back in the day, it was just Korn, Zeech, and Nurgle. And the Eldar are very, very ancient. Millions of years. These Eldar, however, have a bit of a sensory problem. You know, every kind of pain or feeling that you have is a little bit amplified compared to the normal. However, with Eldar, as their race advanced so excessively, and they became so re self-reliant, and everything became so easy, there was no requirement for food production anymore, there was no shortages, everything was basically done. Everyone was so comfortable, and that comfort breeded this weird sedation, and that sedation breeded the requirement for more and more debauchery. De debauchery! 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 When everything you have can be so easily acquired, you will end up down this road of pure debauchery. All of the senses the Eldar had that were so powerful, things like feeling, happiness... So basically, the Eldar got to a point where they were so self-sustained that they had everything, felt everything, experienced everything. They got bored, so they started doing weird in his world ending level debauchery it's so extreme <laughs> this franchise has got the notch turned up to the last on everything <laughs> there is no middle ground with this fucking warhammer 40k dude oh my god it's so crazy sadness and just evil and good all needed to be satisfied and satiated and the desire to satiate these senses grew more and more with worse and worse debauchery it started off with things like sex and drugs becoming so much more rampant because of these are the first things you generally turn to when requirements for living are so easily accessible it would get to the point that made sander cohen in bioshock look sane all right, this is the kind of debauchery it led to. It was constantly don't get the reference because I never played Bioshock. The sexual yet masochistic fantasies that only elevated and elevated, and this was species wide. People started going down darker, more depraved, and more violent paths as time went on. However, some people didn't entirely take to that. Some of the Eldar were looking at this depraved species that they had become and said, I no thanks for me, dog, I'm good. And they bailed. These are the craft world Eldar. They left on these giant continent-sized starships called craft worlds. They believed in learning the old ways of the Eldar and pushing away from this depravity and debauchery and going back to their main roots. And so they would That's so cool. So a huge portion of the Eldar had brain cells left and were like, yeah, no, this is fucking weird. I'm I'm a leave. It's the Eric Cartman meme. Screw you guys. I'm going home, literally, because they wanted to learn the old ways. And I think that's probably what they were missing, ultimately. Their roots, their origin. They had forgotten who they were with this weird, depraved mindset of wanting more sensations and pleasure and just to feel something. I think the Aldar just went through a huge mass depression because they had everything and nothing was making them feel anything anymore 
I love how all of this just makes sense, though. As, as crazy as it is, as heightened as Warhammer 40k is, in the end, it all makes a lot of sense. It's so good. Segment themselves on these giant craft worlds far in the outer reaches of space. They even had this thing called the Webway. Remember what we mentioned about warp travel with the Imperium? Well, the Eldar had something way safer called a Webway. And the Eldar Webway is actually like a pocket dimension kind of thing. And in that pocket dimension, there were also more horrible, depraved groups and clans that would spend their time in there. And if you imagine the debauchery was bad already, these were debauchery X10. So all of what? this continued, and it continued, and it bloated. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Until... Hang on, hang on, hang on. He, he only lightly touched on that topic, and that's a really interesting one. They created their own travel system, their warp system called the webway but within that pocket dimension that you mentioned is another evil realm so this is separate to like chaos in the warp this is something else entirely that they created or is it just like i need to know more about that slanesh just burst forth all that emotion all that mental well thought processes i suppose all of this in such a condensed space don't forget this is all being shot all their souls as well into the warp all this depravity right into the warp so what happened boom slanesh was birthed and killed off 90 percent of the entire eldar population untold trillions trillions what? had their souls ripped from their bodies and their actual fleshy bodies devoured by slanesh demons the entirety of the eldar race was eaten alive and their souls consumed to the prince of pleasure all of them got fucked up it was so bad that it literally <laughs> ripped a warp hole into the fabric of the materium called the Eye of Terror. That's literally this like quasi horrifying gateway portal from the materium and the immaterium right next to Cadia. <laughs> and it is horrifying. So this- so That's another joke that's going over my head. What is that about? Nash, also known as She Who Thirsts by the Horny Eldar, man. <laughs> slaughtered the entire population except for a couple. Those in the craft worlds were actually not affected by this as they were so far in the reaches of the galaxy. That crazy crack, that birth of Sonesh only affected the ones in the center. So these craft world Eldar were able to escape, but Sonesh got their sights on them. Every time an Eldar will die, their soul doesn't just pass into the warp naturally. It goes straight to Slanesh, craft world or not. What about those people wow. in the webway? Well, imagine that giant birth happening, but they were only able to just barely get a grasp onto you. Slanesh was just barely able to hold on. These people are the Dark Eldar, or also known as the Drukhari. The Eldar population oh. right now is so massively small. It is minuscule compared to any of the other pop well, most of the other populations in the universe. The Eldar are consistently having issues trying to get their population up because as their souls are constantly being hungered by from Sonesh, they realize their entire species is doomed and they understand it very well. Since the time of the fall, our race has been haunted by what we, in our reckless pursuit of hedonistic indulgence, gave birth to. Though our dreams once overturned worlds and quenched suns, we are now but fitful shadows clinging to the edge of existence. Damn. All the stars in the sky cannot blot out the hateful glare of the red moon's eye. The birthing place of the great enemy pulses with all the malice of a demon that is dreaming, casting its shadow over all we have ever done and all we ever shall. Every twisted strand of fate and casting of the runes leads me to this time, to this place. Place, and it is clear that the final battle awaits me at the ancient crone worlds, a conflict the likes of which has not been seen since the Monkai warred amongst themselves and their corpse of a seer fell to his traitorous son is coming and all my steps lead towards it no matter that i walk other paths i see the
see the stars stain red with the blood of the Monkai, and though their wars do not concern me, I would gladly let them destroy one another. I know that to avoid this fight is to condemn my race to inevitable doom, and though all I see is darkness, I know that I will not flinch from my destiny. Damn. And now let's talk about cute plastic models. Bro, I'm straight up not having a good time. The first playable race we have for the Eldar are the Craft World Eldar and living in those Craft World starships I mentioned earlier. And each of them have their own kind of Craft World, almost like a Space Marine Legion. Each Craft World is its, in itself its own special kind of group. And the Eldar themselves are very fast and rely a lot on trickery. So the Craft Worlds are just continent-sized ships. And like, <laughs> when you think about continent-sized spaceships, like, how do you even, like, visualize that you know what i mean like this the scale so how many craft worlds are there each craft world has their own legion dude this world just keeps just keeps getting bigger they are squishy a bit weak but they're very in tune as psychers tons of psychers across the entire eldar population and their weaponry and abilities are fast and extremely hard hitting but of course rather fragile Understanding an Eldar's brain is an exercise in futility. They are all over the place in confusion and trickery on a whole galactic scale. They fight weird, they think weirder, and Eldar, in their own right, really rely on this to keep their species alive. They need to think about deception and the strangeness of what they do if they truly want to not be immediately murdered and slaughtered wholesale thanks to their entirely small population. However, I must say that it seems like their population is getting slightly better. These craft worlds hold millions upon millions of people. And as they continually, you know, reproduce and have their craft worlds expand, losing a few people in battle, while hurts a lot, they aren't really losing what's extremely precious to them. It's not like every single death means the death of their species. It seems like they're kind of on the upturn a little bit. They're still a doomed race being sucked into Slaanesh every time someone dies, but they are definitely doing a little bit better than they were before. Eldar are fast, cunning, okay. and what they don't make up for in tankiness, they make up for in extremely advanced weaponry. A kind they of room for the Eldar, Monkai, I'm not gonna lie. Which is something I mentioned earlier. Um, Monkai? That is a derogatory slur for humans in the Warhammer world. Um, why Makes is sense. it called Monkai? Monkey? Well, it's because you can't, in your game, call people monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> On the so, tabletop, exactly what I said. <laughs> not very tanky, generally pretty squishy. Whoa, hit very like cool. Rucks and move at Mach 5. Fast, hit hard, die fast. Exactly how it sounds. They've been good for a very long time, too. We bring only death and leave only carry on. It is a message even a human can understand. Eldar. So, Drukhari. Let's talk about the Dark Eldar. Whoa, hang on a minute now. This image here is familiar to me. I've seen this image many, many times in my ventures through the pop culture world. Who is this character? We're talking about the Dark Eldar, the Drukhari. So this is a Dark Eldar. Ah, uh, I'm locked in. Let's go. Today's episode of how fucked up is fucked up. That's fucked up. So those people I mentioned <laughs> in the webway, in the super deranged cults and the depraved people of the Eldar, in the webway, they didn't quite get a hold onto them. So that's like has them, but it has them on like by the pinky finger. And they're slowly being consumed by Slanesh, but they found out they can stave her off by doing Slanesh things. The Dark Eldar wait, are... Wait, 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 hang on, hang on. I need to understand this a little bit more. So the Dark Eldar, the Drakari, are in the webway. They're in that pocket dimension? That's where they live? How did they get there? Far the worst, most horrifying, disgusting, depraved, and brutal race in all of Warhammer 40k. These Shit. are entirely a group of people whose full purpose to save their species from extinction to go into planets raid them and take as many slaves as they possibly can to torture them for one five ten twenty a million years because that torture will keep them from dying they look very bdsm style too they definitely have a lot more spiky bits and they have a lot more of that kind of leathery black look to them but let's example let's say you are an upstanding imperial citizen living life on a regular planet you get invaded by the necrons 
Shit. Necrons will shoot <laughs> you with a deatomizer, and you will be destroyed in a millisecond, and that's it. Not the worst way to go. Uh, you are invaded by Chaos Marines or something. You take a bolter shot to the head or a chain sword across your stomach, and you get cut in half. Painful, but not the worst. Uh, the orcs arrive. They beat you to death. Hurts, but, you know, whatever. Tyranids, they eat you alive. It's pretty rough. The Dark Eldar. The Dark Eldar. Uh, this oh, is gonna God, get a here graphic. we go. I apologize. You pray what? you die. You don't. You are instead taken as a human slave. Your life will be endless work and agony 24-7. They will make sure you can't not die as your pain satisfies them. They will hook you up to all manner of torture devices. They will inject pain-based like stimuli drugs directly into your nervous system. They will slowly run razor blades across your skin. They will fillet you and just pull out your teeth and your fingernails one by one. They will remove your appendages and your skin and wait for it to grow back so they can do it again. They will murder and torture and use the R word, it rhymes with grape, your entire family in front of you and do the exact same thing to them. You yourself will also be rhymes with grape anywhere and everywhere possible. And this will occur for 20 years until you are no longer satisfying to them. And then you will be contorted crushed and twisted into some form of trophy, a fleshy trophy or a ring or a couch or a TV stand or perhaps a wonderful hat while you are of course still alive and breathing and you will become a moaning fleshy trophy It's pretty bad. That's unnerving. Not 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 a not a fan of that now. <laughs> I didn't think it would get this dark. I, I was not expecting lifetime torture in this series. In this franchise. Of the highest degree. S tier level torture. Like this just proves that this is how far they'll go with the story and its lore. That's actually fucked up. For eternity. And that is what happens when you are taken by the Dark Eldar. They are the most depraved, most horrifying race in all of 40k. They look the part and they do it so they all don't die. They are literally forced to do this because if they don't, Sonesh's grip will get harder and they will have their souls pulled away. So long as they keep doing this, Sonesh is like, you're doing good, man. You're doing solid. You keep, you keep that shit up, you elf ear bastards. That's, that's, the, that's the Dark Eldar. That's the Drakari. They are horrible. On the tabletop, they're actually kind of like Eldar, but more extreme. They are even squishier than the Eldar, but they hit generally even harder. Fast attacks, skirmishers, really quick, speedy, like get around them, do a lot of damage, get away kind of stuff. That's mostly the Dark Eldar. Look up the definition of grim dark in a dictionary. You'll find a picture of the Dark Eldar and Sev from Public Commando. A quote from... Uh, I'm still shook. I'm actually still shook. <laughs> I, just, I don't like this. I want to move on from this now. Mr. Vect. We are the lords of despair, masters of terror, dread and agony are our meat and wine, and they are plentiful indeed. Dark Eldar. Let's talk about the Harlequins. Clowns! Okay, we're moving on. There's Harlequins in this? What? Don't you wanna have some fun? The Harlequins are a bizarre race of Eldar. They're demonic so, clown okay. performers. They're like a weird mix of Sander Cohen from Bioshock and Jin from League of Legends, oh, but cool. in a more clown theme. They're they're artists of 
death and perfectors of their craft. They do not belong to craft worlds or any of the weird Drukhari people. They guard something called the Black Library, which is this giant tome of never-ending knowledge deep in the heart of the Eldar webway, and also guarded by their god named Kegarok, I believe is how you pronounce his name. He is the laughing god. Kegarok. It's the Eldar's laughing god? And these are the Harlequins, the Harlequin clowns. These are Eldar clowns, okay? So imagine the things that an Eldar these depraved individuals would find funny. And this is the god of that. It's, it's a horror clown. These are gods of horror for us normal people. For them, they're like, oh, ho, ho, it's so funny. They're all dying horribly. Ho, 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 honk, honk. They're very bizarre and difficult to describe. Uh, they've escaped the ruinous powers of Slash somehow, but their main thing is guarding that black library. And the Harlequins just... They're demon clown performers. They're barely any models on the tabletop. They're We're pretty cool melee. though. They're, they're demon clowns. I, I'm not sure. I, I got a quote. It is too easy for an Eldar to embrace the obscene virtues of chaos, for Slanesh is nothing more than a manifestation of the Eldar mind in its most wild and unconstrained form. Human morality is meaningless to the Eldar, and to the dark side of the Eldar mind, all life is to be expended at a whim. Cruelty and generosity are but the impulse of a moment. Beauty and sensuality are virtues that can be expressed in bloodshed just as easily as in song. To an unfettered Eldar mind, there is neither sanity nor madness, but merely a wave of perfect existence fulfilled by its own savage momentum. They're very strange. The Harlequins, Drukhari, Eldar, they are an anomaly that make humans seem completely easy to understand in comparison. They range from rekindling their civilization to horrifying murder and also clowns. They are all over the place, but honestly, they represent quite well and are rather interesting, especially with the whole Sonesh murdering everyone bit. So, yeah, Eldar. Now, bugs. Ma, they following me, Ma. The Tyranids. Yes. The bugs. Or Tyranids. The Tyranids. Here we now, go. You want to talk something a lot more fun, a little more simple than all this crazy Eldar shenanigans? Yes, let's move on from the Eldar. The Eldar are so fucked up, I don't want to know any more about them. I thought elves were cool, man. Elves are fucking weird. Let's talk the Tyranids. They're bugs. Do they look like Zerg? Hell yeah, they look like Zerg. You want to know why they look like Zerg? Because they were actually supposed to uh, be what Zerg were. Uh, apparently StarCraft was supposed to be a 40k game in the beginning. Hence no why they look so much like Eldar, Zerg, and the Imperium of Man. Like, kind of space marine -y. Those marines, huh? They look a little bit space marine -y to me. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. You really fucked up on that one, Games Workshop, didn't ya? Tyranids <laughs> are a giant infestation <laughs> of unfathomable proportions. These are giant, extremely bio-advanced hive mind organisms that are basically all about absorbing as much biomass as they possibly can to evolve and mutate to be extremely potent and powerful and kill and eat anything in their path. They are probably the least evil faction in all of 40k because all they want to do is eat shit. They want to om nom nom the entire galaxy. They hangry and we food. Also, this Tyranid hive Fair mind enough. has a presence in the warp. In fact, Tyranids in their own right have a massive presence in the warp. They have a thing called the shadow in the warp specifically, where when they are coming in to invade a planet, they have this weird ability to kind of cut off the warp on all the psychers on that planet. And how do you get help across the stars? Well, you need the warp because you need that for interstellar travel. So with people unable to call for help from the Tyranids, these are just easy pickings. And an entire giant Tyranid hive fleet comes out of orbit and just will massacre, absorbing all that biomass and turning them and all of their other Tyranids into even more advanced monsters. They come Jesus. in so many varieties too, all in, based on what is important. Tiny little ripper swarms for s scouting and having little dudes eat people up to the Hormagons, Termagons, and Gene Stealers, all the way to the Hive Guard and the Exocrines and the Swarm Lord, to Hive Tyrants and their giant battle fleets, and even something as crazy as the Hierophant Bio Titan. The what? Tyranids come in all forms and sizes depending on what they require. 
there. They are extremely good at anti-biological weaponry. There is no way you can plague them or blight them. They have extremely strong armor, uh, carapaces and such. Tyranids are, are nigh perfect organisms and are pretty spooky when it comes down to how they handle all of their genetic material. Keep feeding them, they'll keep evolving. They keep on creating new horrifying organisms to spread across the galaxy. And you know what the most terrifying part of the Tyranids is? We might be surrounded. There have been like around six or seven Tyranid hive fleets. Behemoth, Kronos, all these different kinds of hive fleets. And they <laughs> all arrived so in the pixelated. galaxy from different points. Different sections of the Milky Way galaxy have had different Tyranids come through. And that is horrifying. Because as far as we know, we could just be surrounded on all sides by Tyranids. The only reason you may not hear a Damn. whole lot about Tyranids is because it's a little bit hard to have a bunch of story off of one hive mind genocidal monsters. All these giant bugs swarming in, killing and eating everybody and evolving. Well, I mean, as cool as there are, there's some cool characters, the Swarm Lord, Old One-Eye. You can't really have a whole bunch of major character-based stories around them. As awesome as they are, they're simple. They want to eat you. They want to eat you and absorb your biomass. They are simple bugs. If you want something a little more complex, talk gene stealer cults. I can have all the pot I want, I get around faster than walking, and wherever I need a seat, I can just sit on my balls. Gene stealer cults are a special <laughs> brain of Tyranid that can slowly infect themselves into different kinds of society. And by infecting them, they can rise up to where they all pray and believe in these re like regular humans, pray and believe into their Tyranid hive mind gods. And these brood lords and I think they're called patriarchs all can turn an entire world all based into gene stealers. And these are called gene stealer cults. An entire hive world of the Imperium can be turned into nothing but servants of the Tyranid masters just by infecting them and screwing with their genetic code a little bit. They also have this cool like Mad Max look is really neat. They are definitely one of the bigger threats to the Imperium besides Chaos. I, I keep saying biggest threat to the Imperium. They're up there though because there, you, there seems to be a lot of threats for the Imperium. School. Asshole. There is a cancer eating at the Imperium. With each decade it advances deeper, leaving drained dead worlds in its wake. This horror, this abomination, has thought and purpose that functions on an unimaginable galactic scale. And all we can do is to try to stop the swarms of bioengineer monsters it unleashes upon us by instinct. We have given the horror a name to salvage our fears. We call it the Tyranid Race. But if it is aware of us, it must know us as nothing but prey. Tyranids, they're cool. But are they as cool as the orcs? Every spring's correct! <gasps> okay, so before we move on to the orcs, to Tyranids, so far, everything that I've watched from all the races that Bricky explained, the Tyranids are the simplest creatures. They're the less complex. There's no bullshit about them. They know what they want and they go get it. There's no other conversations happening. There's no heresy, there's no loyalty, it's just I want to nom nom and eat everything and everyone because I like the biomass and I need it for consumption. How the hell did we get here? How did we get here that giant bugs are more relatable than anything else in Warhammer? <laughs> okay, we have the orcs now. That means I'm super fast! Orcs, 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 orcs. Orcs. I fucking love orcs. So, yes, the, the green her, that... monsters, the green tide, the green skins. These orcs, they are in fact a race in 40k. The orcs are as exactly what you expect them. They have archaic weapons, they're big boys, they have axes, and they have got big old teeth and they want to kill everything, and there are so many of them. The only reason they haven't taken over the entire galaxy is they can't stop murdering each other. Orcs are so cool. Orcs don't have philosophy. Orcs don't have existential crisis. What matters is who's the biggest orc. You listen to that guy, because he the biggest orc. He big orc, big orc knows best. You win through the power of imagination. 
Of all the races I have battled throughout the galaxy, the Orc is the hardest to comprehend. They wage war with machines that should not work, care little for strategic gains, and are just as likely to slaughter each other as the enemy. How does one battle an enemy that defies all logic? As an Orc, you're, you're enjoying <laughs> life. You're enjoying the life you're given. Your whole life and job and purpose is to get up and beat each other to death because you can. The biggest orc is the man who understands everything. He is the boss. And orcs have this really weird, like, big, dumb, stereotype British accent, which is just <laughs> hilarious to me. Those are orcs. You're, you fight. You like to fight. Your whole purpose is to fight. You wage war because you want to wage war. You got your boss over there, and you better listen to the boss because if you don't listen to the boss, the boss will squish you and make you an example for the other orcs. And then you can't fight because orc dead. And orc dead is orc dead can't fight because orc dead. Orcs. They scrap together machines out of parts that don't make any sense. And because they believe, they have the mental imagination that that machine will run, it'll run. If that machine's out of gas, you're driving that machine with your fellow orcs, and the biggest orc is behind the wheel, and you run out of gas, some orc behind you is like, oh, oh, Zog, we're out of gas. And the big orc is like, no, we're not. I filled the fucking gas tank up earlier and all the other orcs are like, oh yeah, I, w you did do that. And then you turn the, the fucking mech back on and it works again. Does it have gas? Probably not, but it works through the power of imagination. You, they paint things red because it makes them think that goes faster. They huh? <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? Wait, what? So what kind of like... <laughs> so shit works because they believe it works this is taking visual manifestation to a literal level this is crazy how do they possess this sort of ability wouldn't this make them incredibly powerful no if they have this sort of if they believe it's real it's real ability what <laughs> they paint things red because they think it makes them go faster paint things purple because it's the sneakiest color you want to know why you ever seen a purple orc didn't fucking think so orcs are also like ancient as hell they're back in the eldari time frame but that, back then they were called crooks and they were much larger and scarier and far more intelligent now they're just orcs and they're big dumb and they smack things but they're pretty spooky they're not very well armored, but they hit really hard. And it's called the Green Tide because there are so many orcs. There are about as many orcs as there are Tyranids. Maybe more. Who knows? But they keep what? on, you know, murdering each other. So it's not too bad of an issue. Orcs are entirely comic relief. Their stuff is slapped together. <laughs> that makes no sense. Their vehicles don't work the way they're supposed to, but they work because they think it works, because they imagine that it works. Orcs care only about who is the biggest orc, and they will follow the biggest orc. And then if they want to be the biggest orc, they'll challenge the biggest orc. And then when they go and they issue a wa, a wa is just war in orc, they murder everybody and everything in this giant tide of green orcs who are just excited to be hitting something. They don't care that they're hitting Eldar or the Imperium or Tau or anyone in between. They're just so they get to beat shit up. That's orcs. And on the tabletop, they are a total coin flip and they're really fun. I have never met a salty orc player. I have never met someone who plays orcs and is ever just a bad guy or that guy. Orc players have this kind of fun to them because when you play them, you are completely submitting yourself to RNG. So here's the thing. Guardsmen, Imperial Guardsmen, when they shoot, they roll a dice, and on a four up, they'll hit their target. They have a 50% chance. Space Marines, pretty good. They hit on a three or higher because they're well-trained. Adeptus Custodians, they hit on twos because they're just super well-trained. Orcs, they hit on a five or higher. But if they roll a six, they get to make another shot with anything from the dinkiest pistol to the biggest rocket launcher. It doesn't matter. Half of their stuff will blow up on a whim. One of their medics, if you roll a one to heal someone, you fuck up your surgery and you just kill an orc. They're so wacky and silly. That's but the thing so is, is, if fun. you roll well, you roll high, and you keep rolling high, you are going to crush people. And if you don't, you lose. I mean, that's what you get when you play orcs. 
That's what happens when you play orcs. It's a coin flip, which is why you can't be a salty bitch when you play orcs, because things won't go your way. It's just the roll of the dice. You're playing a dice game. But if you're going to have fun and you want to be stupid and you want to be silly, you're going to play some damn orcs. That's cool. But on cool. the opposite side of the I fun like that. part of this, let's talk about the Necrons. Oh, we're going back to the Necrons. This is where it all began, right? The Necrons are spooky, scary skeletons and very grimdark again. They have a much more fleshed out lore than before. Back in the day, they were just undead Egyptian space terminators, and they still look that way, but now they actually have a story. So way back in the day, you had the Necron tier. Kind of see a theme here, Eldari, Eldar, Krork, Orc, Necron, Necron tier. So the Necron tier were this race of generally kind of shitty people. Not because they were personally shitty, but because their lives were awful. They were ill-fated to a horrible existence of like radiation and a terrible planet they lived and on. And everything and just stuff. really sucked. Being a Necron tier was just really depressing. They really were looking for immortality. They were extremely reliant on the hope that they would eventually find the key to living forever and to stave off this horrible nature that they were thrust upon them. And therefore, they could become the most dominant race in the galaxy and they found this group they're called the old ones Imagine here we go kind of like the forerunners in halo, halo or the Salnaga yeah. in starcraft right these old ones were these sp strong oh pretty much omnipotent beings and they of course knew the key to immortality so the necrons went to them and said please show us your ways and the old ones said no piss off <laughs> not really, they were a lot more humble about it, but they did not want to share their secret of immortality with the Necrons. The Necrons, of course, took this personally very well and waged war with them. Kind yeah. of under this united banner. That was the dumb. Necron different dynasties didn't really like each other. But under this one man, the Silent King, he thought the best way to unite his race was to do this giant war with the Old Ones out of spite for them keeping the secret of immortality to them. This was known as the War in Heaven, and this is actually like a multi-stage war, because during this War in Heaven, they discovered the Star Gods, a whole new race of people known as the Catan, or the Catan. The These Catan. Star Gods were also very much like old ones, almost omnipotent beings, and they too had the key to immortality. And so the Necrons went to them and said, hey, can you help us fight off the old ones can you help us kill these old ones you the katan and the katan said yes and in fact we can help provide you with the immortality you so desperately uh, seek so the yes. silent king of the necrons decided to make a pact with the katan to allow them to accept this generous gift of immortality upon them but this of course okay so this is one he touched on this in what is 40k video and i thought that the necrons leader deceived his own race by making this pact with the katan but in actual fact the katan didn't fully explain what was the cost of immortality to this leader of the necron the necron tier ultimately leading to them becoming these undying necron or immortal robotic machines. I think that's where this is going, if I remember correctly. Of course, had been a horrendous trap, and the Necrons were dragged in chains to this biotransference where their flesh was stripped from them, replaced with nothing but a metal hollow shell as their souls were ripped from their body and fed to the Catan. And the Catan fattened up. They got chonk on the souls of the Necrons. As this was their plan all along, they consumed the flesh and souls of the Necron tier and turned them all into unwilling robotic slaves just to serve their will. And then with their new founded Necron army, they pointed their guns at the old ones and the Catan continued their domination of the stars and their genocide complete and full genocide of these old ones the old ones did their best to stave it off they even created other races the eldari, the eldari. and the orcs to try to fight off the horrifying necron That's so cool man so the necrons like like somebody correct me if i'm wrong here the necrons is literally the beginning of warhammer 40k like they are the, the beginning it was the necron 
the old ones and the Catan. Those three. Catan and the old ones being these celestial higher beings than the Necron, which were these beings that were just kind of pathetic in a world that they just were given the short end of the stick. This is crazy. It's so cool. Army and the Catan above them, but there was absolutely no possible chance for them. And the old ones were absolutely extinguished across the galaxy. Their entire race completely removed full-on 100% genocide. However, during all this, the Catan, so just infatuated with their victory, started fighting each other for fun, for sport, and for small differences, doesn't matter. The Catan, with these over overpowered people, they're gonna eventually hit each other at some point. And as they began just menially fighting each other, the Eldari and the Orcs actually started pushing on the Catan's borders a little bit, giving them a little bit of a run for their money. And as this continued, this is when the Silent King, who retained his consciousness, decided to leap into action and start a full-scale revolt against their Catan masters. And this revolt was bloody, as the entire Necron army was surged off to destroy these star gods. They they were able to, just after suffering horrendous losses, were able to turn the tide of the war. And they took these Katam and they blasted them. Because as these star gods are unkillable, they were able to break them into thousands of shards and entrap them in giant stasis vaults to now actually be slaves to the Necrons. And with the Necrons having the entirety of their old gods enslaved to them, they realized that soon their race was about to be attacked by the overcoming new races, the Eldari and the Krorks. And so what they did is they retreated into giant stasis tombs in order to preserve their energy and their strength for when one day they would be reawakened and they would be able to rule the galaxy that was rightfully theirs. And then some dingus Adeptus Mechanicus guy diddled with a green console and now the Necrons are back and they see all these primitive races on their lawns and they think get the fuck off of it the necrons are back super advanced and they are here to reclaim the galaxy that they so rightfully believe is theirs now on the tabletop they're a lot like that tons of undead egyptian skeleton robots so when cool. they die they just get right back up because they keep on reanimating hard to kill tons of crazy stuff you can use the katan themselves as units to fight no with way. pretty cool that, that necrons is cool. are the one of the three major events in 40k the horus heresy the fall of the eldar and the awakening of the necrons are all pretty substantial events and the necrons themselves are pretty pretty dang cool as well here's a good quote from a wonderful dawn of war game lucky creatures as long last you have found the tranquility of death i was like you once clinging to life and blind to the truth when i uncovered the truth i too shuddered and pale with fear deep in these catacombs i was remade here my brethren slumbered for eons while the living grew like weed my lord knew this day would come he had plans for us all we would purge this world once more so come poor victims of life we will grant you tranquility in these crypts Kronos will be a tomb world once more Necrons are also pretty smug Trays in the infinite especially a little little dickhead but speaking of dickheads last race let's talk the Tau we made a fucking walkie the Tau the exact formation of the Tau so so far like it seems like when it comes to the importance of the races and which one i feel is the most important and the most significant it would be the necron wouldn't you agree because they were kind of here first and all they wanted was a better life and then they were deceived by higher beings to the point where they turned on these higher beings and eventually over overthrown them and locked themselves in a way in a tomb to rest, to be reawakened to a world or a universe filled with what they see as weeds, as rodents, and they need to exterminate them to reclaim their worlds. That's rightfully theirs. I think that's pretty fucking cool. I'm surprised it didn't end with the Necrons. Let's see what he says about this race, the Tau Empire. Tau Empire is not entirely understood. However, a long, long time ago, many thousands of years ago, uh, in the 40k world that is some imperial navigation vessels were going around through different areas and they saw a primitive race blue people smacking each other with sticks and stones they thought yeah 
dumb Xenos race who gives a shit, and they bailed. Then this giant warp storm occurred right in that major area, unable to be breached. Then, once that warp storm 6,000 years later subsided, hello, those little sticks. Well, they decided to actually have no war of any kind and all just unite together under one flag of the Tau Empire. And now they have gigantic starships and Gundam robots and lasers and railguns and mechs and they are here to ruin your day for the greater good. That is generally the Tau Empire. Uh, they have this kind of feeling of this homogenous group. All species can go underneath the banner of the greater good. The Transformers greater good is their vibes. idea of the fundamental increase and help of all. In fact, they are most likely the most like the covenant in Halo, where cool. they have. The I like all the Halo references. Being the Ethereals, who are actually kind of dicks and, and like to pull at strings a little bit, but mm -hmm. then you have all these different races directly underneath them, and they all work together in this big group as this large, foreboding race that s tries to spread their weirdly pseudo-religious influence across the galaxy. The alien is not intrinsically evil. Do not hate him. Pity him, his ignorance. Seek to understand his differences and equate him with his inadequacies. Only then will he accept his place in the greater good. The greater that good. That is generally the Tau. <laughs> and if you're kind of wondering like what their mainly big shtick is, well, they're all about big robots and mechs. They have laser rifles and rail guns. They got giant mechs with tons of missile pods That's and so heavy cool. rail rifles and rail guns and burst cannons and ion accelerators and void shields and all this stuff. And that is generally what the Tau's all about. But you're probably thinking, Bricky, this doesn't sound that evil. This doesn't sound very no. grim, dark Warhammer. Yeah, I was going to say. you'd be right. The Tau Empire really don't have that much of a horrifying, grim, dark style like everybody else. They're much more younger, new age thing. In fact, they're probably a lot less evil and a lot even better than they are now back in the day because they liked having like that good guy faction. But a lot of us who really liked the, the dark, depressing style of Warhammer, didn't really like it that much. So, see, the Tau get a lot of hate, and a lot of that hate isn't necessarily unjustified. It's mainly from a tabletop perspective, but as you can see from all the visuals I've shown you recently, they don't really fit in the 40K universe very well. They lack that super dark, dramatic, yeah, kind of high it seems gothic level the Imperium has. Just they don't doesn't have the seem weird, kind of like fitting. grungy stuff that Chaos or say the Orcs do. And the Necrons and the Eldar have their own specific style as well. The Tau really do look like something out of Gundam. And while it isn't necessarily a bad thing, it does definitely not fit too well. There's that. It's also the tabletop problem. Uh, in tabletop, Tau are horrible at melee combat, but exceptionally good at ranged combat. So they blast everyone from really, really far away, and they have a million rules to make it so that it's nearly impossible for you to get into melee combat. So it basically just forces That's you to shit. bottleneck the game into one specific gameplay style, which is gun to gun. And if you're doing gun to gun, they're going to win every time because they're the Tau, and the Tau are really damn good at shooting. So it's one of those things that make the Tau generally rather hated and a lot of different reasons uh, for that, uh, both from style and such. But this is actually one of the things I wanted to end this video with, is that the Tau, while they have their issues, you should not be discouraged from playing them. I'll make plenty of Tau weeaboo jokes, of course I will, but it's all generally in good fun. Anyone who legitimately doesn't want you to play a faction is an idiot and you shouldn't be giving them the time of day. You True. pick what you, you play think who is you want cool to play as. and what you like. like. In Warhammer especially Respect. now, factions get better and they get worse. They grow and then they fall. You should only be playing what you think is cool. You like the look, you like the models. If you're talking tabletop, that is what you should be going for every time is what you think is badass because things change all the time. But the universe of Warhammer has so much going for it. Every faction has something interesting. Every character has a story and there's a million stories to be told. The universe is vast and exciting and while it is dark, depressing and horrible, that is the damn charm. And out of everything I've yep. told you in these two videos, yep. the anything you could take away is the reason why so many of us are so into this series and why we like it so much. Because with so much variety, such an expansive universe, and so much that can be done, 
you can find yourself having a pretty great time. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has been informative. To Bricky, thank you so much, dude. Before I go, let me leave you with my favorite Warhammer quote. He who scoffs at the power of the lad's gun has never ran through a field of a thousand of them. Bye bye He who scoffs at the power of the last gun has never ran through a field of a thousand of them. I like that quote too. Oh my god, dude. My brain's doing that thing again. It's doing that thing again. It's processing. This world, this universe, this franchise is gigantic. There is so much. There is so much to learn and so much to explore that you can't help but get excited about it. I don't think I've come across a franchise as vast and as well expanded as Warhammer 40k. Imagine having something like this with so many different races, so many different stories, narratives, creative direction, but all of it coming together and making sense and everything working very well together, it's a rare thing to see. It's not often that you find something that has elves, that has orcs, that has demons, that has soldiers and marines and gods and celestials. And like, these are things that are in fiction and all of them have their own stories and own their own franchises. And they all kind of stick with the one or the two maybe a third but warhammer 40k has fucking everything and you would think that would get messy and you would think it wouldn't make sense but for some reason it all comes together really really well i love how huge this universe is and how much there is to explore in it because it means there's something for everyone in warhammer 40k and i think that's so special learning all of this from bricky thank you again bricky I, I can safely say there's so much that I want to explore, there's so much that I want to delve into. Maybe not the elves, because that got weird. Maybe not so much that, but everything else, fascinating, creative, and just downright interesting. That was my reaction to every single Warhammer 40k faction part 2. I hope you enjoyed my reactions to it, my, my brain exploding from the information but also loving it i can't wait to check out more i really want to dive into the space marine stuff now and all the different space marine um primarchs and legions explained i'm sure bricky has a video on that so we'll definitely check that out i also i'm really craving to play some more warhammer 40k space marine 2 i'm definitely going to do that so a lot of videos coming like i said i've been blasting out these videos and i hope you guys are enjoying them if you are do what the others have been doing by leaving a like on the videos and subscribing if you want to check out bricky's content and this is the first time you've seen his stuff i will link this video down below and you can also see his channel there too make sure you subscribe to him if you love warhammer 40k he is an expert i am not i am simply but a student and i want to graduate the school of warhammer 40k I'll get there eventually, but right now I'm just enjoying the ride and I'm having a good fucking time doing it. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you all in my next Warhammer 40k video. See you later, dudes.